other sports are continually looking at how do we get the edge. Where Tim and Jacko align with us is philosophies. Um, you know, the principles about enjoying what you do, breaking down the movements to where the person's capable of. Today we talked about bomb proofing the shoulders. That's what we're about is, is limiting risk. It's a contact sport. I think within rugby, everybody's looking for an edge, whether that's athletics coaches, whether that's wrestling judo coaches. So it's not just rugby, all the sports are probably bringing in and looking at other sports to get an edge. The principles that we went through today in terms of uh, the closed kinetic chain work and body management are really important for, for young rugby players. I think we've had a real overemphasis on strength, uh, traditionally in terms of bench, squat, deadlift, power cleans, and that's led to a kind of neglect of the, the wide kind of movement to toolbox and skill set. So um, I'm really proactive in, in kind of promoting within our young players having that wide skill set of being able to manage your body in different contexts, in different spaces, in different kind of scenarios, whether that's out in, in joint angles that they're not kind of traditionally touching on in their uh, kind of conventional programs, and just being able to manage their body weight in a variety of contexts is really key. Yeah, I think the closed kinetic chain stuff's really good for us because we see a high proportion of shoulder injuries, and when they're getting their confidence up, they have to be able to take the weight through their hands, take the weight through different parts of their bodies. And this will be able to have them in a safe environment that we can control. And when they get a bit better at that, we can take our hands off and support them less and less. And they can also work outside their base of support as well to sort of challenge their proprioception, challenge their strength, and give them confidence when they get back into the rugby setting where a lot of tackles are made outside their comfort zone or outside their base of support and reactive. So they have to change direction quickly and suddenly so this gives us a, an opportunity to challenge them various different ways and give them lots of different opportunities to explore that through the different uh, exercises that we had. We see guys that can bench into like 120, 130 then you try to get them to either a Hindu press up or a, a pike shoulder press and they're really struggling. I was thinking when you ask if guys are strong you, you can sort of hide them being strong by oh look they press this but there's that global strength and the little instability stuff. We, we get guys in the academy and they struggle like a, a ring press up. Guys who can bench, let's say 130, are, are shaking all over the shop when it comes to rings. So it's, it's that whole defining what is strong. If they're strong through the little movements, then as like I say, it's the, creating those bomb proof shoulders to, so that it serves them well. So they're not breaking down in a couple of years and they get, and especially for the young guys, it's getting that progression. They need to have time on field so they can get picked up by the, the other coaches and, and scouts and clubs. So. That's, that's the best we can do as SSE guys, is to get them prepared in the, the best way. I've been using some of the, the content online within my coaching already, so uh, within some of the, the PDP groups that I run, um, and the, the guys and girls have responded really well to that. I've um, really enjoyed it, seen it really as a time for play, so they've kind of not even viewed it as traditional training, they've actually just enjoyed the challenge of a frog stand or a handstand walk, um, as well as within my own training, kind of experiencing things that are outside of the traditional conventional programming, and the challenges that that, that that kind of places on you, but also just the, the opportunity to explore movement in a different way. I think the progressions and regressions we went through um, were fantastic in terms of being able to apply that in the context of coaching. Um, often it's difficult when you see someone doing a human flag or a handstand to, to kind of think, okay, where's step one within that process? Um, but today offered a real practical kind of walkthrough of how we can progress and regress appropriately. Uh, it was fantastic for me leading a region. I had lots of contractors there that I've kind of been promoting this work with. So for them, not having that background and being able to pick up those skills, now I've got confidence that they can go away and coach that insight with, with the players that we, we operate with. People might struggle to see the context of a human flag on, on the pitch, but what we're talking about is not necessarily the outcome of a human flag. We're talking about the torque going through the shoulder, the internal and external rotation, um, the strength through full range of full extension and flexion, which we require on uh, the chaos of the rugby pitch because we just don't know where hits are going to come from. We don't know what direction we're going to have to hand off in and we need guys who are, and girls who are able to be strong in, in full range of motion through all planes, specifically around the, the shoulder joint. I'd hope the coaches leave today excited with a good toolbox of exercises. One, to try themselves and to feel how it moves and to understand the movement with more information, more theory behind the exercises, understanding what we can learn from the school with Tim and Jack. Already the feedback has been good. The workshops equip them well and I think they're excited about going and trying it themselves first and then figuring out where it fits within their sessions. Okay.